Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another 18 Minutes with 180 Markets. Patience. Friends, mining is a patience game. And what I mean by a patience game is that it could take thousands of years to get those correct formations that can give us the mineralization for tomorrow, and especially battery minerals that we're going to talk about in a minute. But what we love here at 180 Markets is when we combine this old with the new. And what I mean is new mining techniques, a new government that we're going to talk about perhaps, or something that has changed that gets people like us really excited. And then on top of it all, we look for that great risk reward ratio that, look, we would be reminisced to say it is not an easy market out there right now. But that's why as investors, what we can control is that upside downside type of ratio. And that's what we're focused on. And putting it all together, we are joined today by a spinoff, and I love spinoffs, of a company in Tanzania that we're going to talk about, Energy, and its new managing director, David Dravel. And with us, David, welcome to 18 Minutes with 180 Markets. Hi, Greg. Thanks for having us today. Excellent. Excellent. Hey, David, everybody's got a story. In just a couple of minutes, can you tell us, how did you get to Energy? No, no problem. Yeah. So I've I've been I've been in in the industry for the past fifteen years basically. Uh, started out over here in Western Australia, five years working in the exploration game out in out in Western Australia, variety of commodities, good exposure there, and then at that point I sort of moved moved back to the UK where I'm originally from, and the preceding sort of ten years I've mostly been focused in Tanzania, um, working on a lot of Ecographs projects out there, who are the parent company of Energy, who we're spinning out from. And it's it's sort of been been a, a great time to really sort of learn learn Tanzania, learn how it works. And and 10 years working in, in a place really sets you up to to know how to sort of navigate um a country like that. If if you're not if you're not originally from there, it's not necessarily your sort of culture and everything. It, it takes time. You get some companies coming into these countries, um, sort of green, and they don't they don't know how to do it. They spend a year, million dollars, just learning how to do it. Opposite with us, we, myself and the rest of the management, we know Tanzania. So, um, yeah, I think my sort of history positions me well to to deliver energy strategy here. Yes, absolutely. And what we're buying is basically freshly it is 10 years of experience. So I guess you could say you're an overnight success and it's taken you a decade um, yeah. <laughs> in that process there. But maybe just back up for a second. You mentioned your spinoff from Echograph and that's one of the things that I alluded to in the introduction. Can you just talk to us a little bit about what is Echograph for people that don't know mm -hmm. and how is energy different? No problem. Yeah, so Echograph are a um, sort of vertically integrated graphite battery anode um, developer at the minute. So they started out with their graphite assets in Tanzania, which they've spent the past sort of 10, 12 years exploring, bringing up to development ready stage. And whilst doing that parallel to that, they've been working on the, the downstream side of um, graphite and battery anode material, where they're looking to um, just develop that sort of value add chain where you do the the additional downstream processing of the graphite to make it ready for these lithium ion batteries. So they're they're very much focused on the anode side of lithium ion batteries. But the other side of the market, you've got the cathode side where that's where nickel, lithium, cobalt, all of those guys sort of fall into. Tradition, like originally before graphite, ecograph in when it was cabarin resources, cabarin nickel. It was a nickel, um, Tanzanian nickel explorer. So they, they've got a bit of history in the nickel side of things, but the the nickel market went quiet for a long time. So they they sort of diversified into graphite, and but they always kept an eye on on the sort of nickel side in Tanzania. They knew the um, potential. During my ten years with Ecograph. I've sort of had a lot of exposure with that sort of nickel side that was ticking over in the background. And then two years ago, we thought, right, the time's sort of getting right. The the battery market's really hotting up. Now is finally the time to start pushing 
these sort of nickel assets that we've been sort of sitting on and and um, just waiting for that moment. So we we came in, and the beauty of it was that we we were sort of first movers when it came to sort of picking up a lot of this nickel ground in Tanzania again. Two years ago, grabbed a lot of the hottest ground. We we knew what was looked nice, what what didn't, and we had sort of first dibs on a lot of it. And then a year after we started doing this, um, BHP came back into the country. So that was the sort of validation on what um, what we'd been doing, what we thought was the right move. Um, having, well, the world's biggest miner, they know nickel, they know the geology and everything. So, um, yeah, real real validation on what we were doing. And, and that sort of brings us to this point now. Yes. <clears throat> Excellent. And that's what we are, I guess, what's on offer today. Now, you have in Tanzania a huge land holding. I think it's about 5,400 mm. square kilometers. Is that correct? Um, yeah, so five, yeah, 5,300 square kilometers. Um, and that's spread over four projects. Um, approximately sort of 4,600 of those sit on uh, three nickel projects. And then we've got a um, sort of a secondary focus with a one gold project set out there. But the majority of our ground is all covering this sort of nickel sulfide um, tenement holding that we've got, which is comprised of our northern, western and southern frontier projects. Right. And you're not the only one, as you mentioned, that's looking in this area. We have that big boy uh, BHP that's quite nearby. David, what makes this area so prospective from your opinion and what makes it so exciting? Mm. Yeah, so it's you've got this East African nickel belt, which there's a bit of literature out there about it. Um, there's been some pretty big discoveries there with um, obviously Kabanga nickel, which BHP have recently come into. But relative to some of your more established nickel belts, it just hasn't had the love that it it really deserves. Um, but it's it's got the potential to be one of the one of the greats up there with sort of like. Thompson up in um, Canada or some of these um, phenomenal nickel belts that we've got in um, Western Australia as well. So in the 90s, when BHP was originally out there and they found Kabanga, um, it suddenly got a big flurry of activity. But combination of things, nickel market and things like that, BHP pulled out and it's just been, just been unloved for the past sort of two, three decades. So during that time other nickel nickel belts have had a lot more love and affection like piled into it a lot of exploration but that's not been the case here so they found this sort of world-class deposit in kabanga um but then that sort of regional exploration upstrike of it has just hasn't been done and that's where we're sort of coming in um northern frontier which is the the project that sits just upstrike from kabanga we've got 2,400 square kilometers in that belt. Um, repetition of a lot of the geology, geophysics, geochem that you see at Kabanga, just upstrike. But crucially, it's been um, underexplored to date. So it's not been peppered to death with lots of drilling, lots of testing to date. Um, so we're coming in with established prospects and targets following BHP's regional work that they did back in the 90s. Right. But we're going to come in and really test those and sort of look to find a repetition of of the likes of Kabanga. Right. OK, so that's you obviously have a lot to chew on air with activities and land holding. I have two questions for you. Number one, how are you choosing the best locations? Because obviously out of twenty five hundred square uh, square kilometers that you, or you just mentioned, it's almost overwhelming. And then secondly, mm. what, are, what are the next six months look like from an activity perspective? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So so we've got um I suppose picking up the the ground originally, you've got nickel sulfides, you've got quite a few different approaches you can go to. Some commodities you can just sort of walk up, see it on the ground, you've got a big chunk of iron ore or something just sat there and it's it's easy just to sort of stumble yeah. upon it. Um nickel sulfides, you've got to be a bit a bit more clever and everything, sort of pull in some of these sort of um geophysical techniques, looking at um EM, looking at the conductivity of the ground and also some of these geochemical um, soils and stream sediment samplings that can allow you to sort of vector into the sort of the prime targets because it's not just sat there on the ground so shouting out, here we are, drill here. So 
a lot of our early prospects have had um we've sort of benefited from this historic bhp legacy where they they've done a lot of geochem and geophysics so we were able to bring those look at the analogies from the kabanga data sets which um a lot of that data was contained in the um in the historic database as well so we could use that analogy from kabanga see how that lined up with the geophysics with the geochem and sort of vector in on on these sort of exciting prospects elsewhere in the belt and that was where we sort of picked a lot a lot of our ground okay and we've sort of we've been like one of our sort of approaches has been to get a big land holding and like we could have just pegged lots of little postage stamps surrounding each of these right. little prospects but we're not um, we're not shy shying away from the fact is we want to create we want to find a big deposit we want a big land package that's attractive to majors um we we don't want to just find this little deposit that we then try and chase ourselves and everything we want to we want to get something that the big boys want um right. and if you go to them with a few square k's they're not interested you go to them with a few thousand and they're interested and that's we're doing that in the background we're talking to the 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 big guys so that they're familiar with it and everything and and so that they've got their eyes on it um at the same time as we're sort of exploring it and then i suppose leading on to your second part of your question what what yeah. does the next few months take so we've got these we've got these targets these prospects already generated and because myself and the team we we know how to work out there we're ready to sort of hit the ground run, running day one post ipo we're yeah. not going to waste the first six months going oh what do we do in tanzania as does anyone know the number of a geologist we find a drilling contractor um like 10 10 years out there i know the best drilling contractors i know the right geologists that know nickel sulfides so i've got those lined up and I've got a fantastic team that I work with out there, some real experts on um, nickel sulfide in East Africa as well, because some companies go out to Africa, they they get their um, nickel geologists from Western Australia that might know um, RTI nickel, um, nickel sulfide deposits or something like that, and they go and take that approach to um, East Africa. And the geology is different. Um, right. So yes, you might know nickel sulfides, but you might not know the sort of the sort of subtle differences that might control right. mineralization and the devil in the detail. The, yeah, yeah, and that's the approach I wanted. I wanted a a local crew that knew the local geology so that we can right. have the best chance of success. So we're going to spend the first couple of months refining these targets to make them sort of drill ready, and then we um. We're basically just coming into the dry season now and we've got all the way through to the end of the year. Okay. So we've got the full field season ahead of us. And the idea is first couple of months, refine those targets, get them drill ready. And then we've got the remainder sort of um, few months of the of the dry season before the end of the year to complete that our sort of first campaign of drilling and sort of really test those targets. So we've got a, a sort of a busy first six months ahead of us with a steady flow of um, of news and hopefully some really sort of juicy results in there. Gotcha. Hey, David, question for a lot of our investors that are in Australia, they're very familiar with nickel in Australia. And one of those mm -hmm. characteristics recently have been companies drilling far deeper, six, seven, 800 meters type of down mm -hmm. uh, to find those discoveries. A lot of them are looking where WMC had shallow drilling yeah. in the 1980s. How does energy compare and how, how, can you just give some type of mental framework? Yeah, yeah. I suppose some of that in Western Australia comes to the down to the fact that it's quite an established nickel belt. So the easy stuff has been found, it's been mined, right. it's gone. So they're they're now looking right, where else do we look? And you obviously look deeper and deeper and deeper and costs go up. Um, but beauty of the the nickel belt there in Tanzania is it's not it's not well developed and you've got Kabanga and it it's due to be an underground operation but you you don't have to go down too far like the first um I forget the exact depth but you're probably looking at mineralization kicking in 100 meters down oh, okay. and one one Shall of them I? comes up to just to surface 
um, it's got a small surface expression, the other one sits a little bit below it. Um, but you, you've got the operation, the underground operation covering sort of the top few hundred vertical meters. And um, so there's, there's, yeah, there's the potential there for it to be a relatively shallow sort of um, nickel operation. We're not sort of looking to be sort of six, 700 meters down um, right. for the first hit and everything because because that sort of shallow stuff hasn't been sort of ripped out already, then yeah, that's what we're originally going to be looking for. And I think we're sort of fairly confident there's, that there is still the potential for that. Right. And now, David, again, you know, going back to the, si the sheer size of your land holding, you have different for frontiers. I think it's the northern, southern and western frontiers. Is there any big differential between those or is it just more a question of just demarcating the land? Um, so, so they're all sort of similar age geology. Um, the uh, northern and western are in this same sort of alignment of of nickel sulfide deposits. You've got Kabanga, Musungati, Kapalagulu. These are existing sort of known nickel sulfide deposits running down that sort of western part of Tanzania. So, both northern and western frontier are in that same belt. So, they sort of hold a lot of the same sort of potential. Right. Um, Southern Frontier, a little bit different, similar age rocks, but it's set in a, um, a separate sort of geological belt over in the sort of south southeast part of Tanzania. This is the Mozambique belt, which is the same setting as Nataka Hill, um, which, um, yeah, some, some of your sort of um, listeners may be familiar with it, held by an ASX company in the past. So there's the similarities and there's differences they're they're all they're all focused on nickel sulfides um rather than nickel laterites and um and we're in all cases we're sort of chasing that sort of higher grade um, nickel sulfide deposit so right. some of the big operations they they work on massive volume and low grade sort of half a percent type thing but the banger it's it's a juicy sort of high grade thing, like 2.6%. Right. Um, when you factor in the copper and cobalt credits, you're looking at sort of 3.14% oh, nickel right, okay. equivalent. So it's real sort of high grade right. um, 2 sort of operation. Worth, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's the sort of thing that we're targeting. We're um, 58 million tons, high grade. That's sort of, that's the sort of end game that we'd love to be sort of sitting at a few years down the track. Wow. Okay, so David, so it's really energy is really setting itself up for massive size success. There's real activity, and it makes sense as far as the Echograph spinoff as as well. Mm -hmm. uh, even though, and as I said, you know, you you've been here for ten years, but in a way, it's kind of new. Um, unfortunately, David, we have to keep the interviews fairly short and concise. Yep. If there was like one or two points though about energy, you'd want every investor to know about. What would they be? Yeah, no problem. Um, so I suppose we we see it as this sort of world class nickel belt, but it's it's like the final frontier. Like you could you can go to so many other parts of the of the world to these existing nickel belts, but they've been sort of riddled to death with drilling. We're going to this East African nickel belt, and it's it's not it's barely been touched relative to these. So we're going in phenomenal potential, and also this massive massive ground holding that sets us up to be attractive to these majors and what people want people want news and and we've got a, a good sort of um condensed program of of activity in these first six months so people aren't going to be hanging around waiting for news so we're we're coming into one of the most exciting under explored parts of the world when it comes to nickel sulfide and we're going to be hitting it straight on the ground running first day and hopefully delivering a juicy sort of flow of news over those first few months. Right. David, thank you very much. We really look forward to it. It's very exciting and definitely, definitely be in touch. Perfect. Now, thank, thanks for your time today. And yeah, looking forward to it. Okay. Bye -bye. Okay. Cheers. Thanks for watching another episode of 18 Minutes with 1A Markets. And don't forget, if you want access to thousands of capital raises, Sign up at 180markets.com.au and you'll get access to our very next capital raise. Thanks for watching.